So first I want to say thank you very much, uh, John Lampkin, and uh, for sharing your journey, sharing uh, your stories about uh, growing up in Atlantic City, sharing your stories about, uh, you, you know, your college years in South Carolina, and uh, your years that you spent here in Baltimore. But uh, there are two John Lampkins. That's right. That's right. And, uh, <laughs> and the other John Lampkin is a fine educator as well. And he's also a fine drummer. Yeah. And I, when I first met him, I always would tease him and say, you know, you know you're my favorite left-handed drummer. <laughs> so uh, give me some stories. Give me some stories about your son, John Lampkin Jr. Or John Lampkin. The he said, no, we call him the third. You call him the third. He's the third. He John on his Lampkin Facebook page. He got John Lampkin. Right. John R. Lampkin. Right. Okay? I'm the second. Gotcha. He's the third. He's the right? third. So, so just get that right. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I tell him, I said, put that third down there. So people think that I'm your son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was so interesting. The first time I met him, he was at he was in the University of Donald Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Donald Harrison came up through the University of Art Blakey, yeah, yeah. Roy Haynes, yeah. Jack McDuff. So, uh, so he was in good hands yeah, yeah. at that time. And I kind of want you to talk a little bit about your son. Well, yeah, he um, he always wanted to play. He was play drums, and he was around here playing on everything. And I remember buying him the little, you know, Baby Ray drum set, and he beat that up. <laughs> he beat yeah. it to death. We bought another one, and, and finally I bought him a set. Um, you know, the, the left-handed thing. He's left-handed, right? Yeah, yeah. So. You know, and I said to him, I said, okay, I said, since you're left-handed, you might as well set up the left-handed way, you know. So that was, I, that was my thing. That's uh -huh. what I did. Uh -huh. and, and little did I know that he, I could have just let him play the other way, and he would have been a left-hander playing right. But, you know, I said, man, see, you left-handed, so... Exactly. It so made sense. You know. So anyway. That's how he did end up left-handed drums. Yeah. But um, yeah. but he he would be around here. I had the guys come over here. Dennis Chambers come over here. Mm -hmm. George Gray. Come yeah. Over Who? Here. Dennis Chambers. Yeah. Also a very fine drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dennis Chambers right in the back. Yeah. Because because you were in the back, you know. But back then I didn't have all of this stuff in the back I had now. I always have a piano back. Right. You know? Right. But all this stuff. So I had enough room so I could have musicians and and. Do you remember? You remember um, uh, um, Jimmy Wells is in there. Oh yes, absolutely. Jimmy Wells. Jimmy Wells used to bring his wow. vibes back there, <laughs> right there, and and, and, wow. and stand right there by the sink, and and we would rehearse. Amazing. You know? Yeah, and I had a bass player and a drummer back there, and a saxophone player and piano player. You know, it'd be tight. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'd, we'd make yeah. it happen, right? Well, when the drummers would come through here. John would be messing with the drummers. He'd be, he'd be, John was into karate, you know. So right. He'd be karate right. chopping and all this. But he learned from he learned from George Gray. As a matter of fact, I took him over to George's house and George taught him. Um, he learned also from uh, from 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 the, the band director, the, the the percussion teacher at at. Um, at Towson. Mm, I was, mm. Do you know Tony Sweet? Does that name I don't, The name doesn't ring a bell. Tony Sweet was a drummer and we played together in in um, in, in um, uh, what's, the, what's the boy's name? Uh, it'll come to me. The, the Washington Jazz Battalion um, and, and Tony Sweet was the drummer. And I liked the way he played. I mean, he had some stuff going mm. on. And, you know, he wasn't a Blakey, or, you know. Right. But he right. had some nice stuff, really nice hands and whatnot, nice solos and all that stuff. You know, he could play. Um, so I asked Tony, I said, man, I said, uh, you know, where you learn all that stuff from? He said, well, he said, there's a, 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 a teacher over at Towson. His name was Dale Rauschenberg. Mm. Okay. So I got in touch with Dale and I told him about my son. So I used to take him over there. He lived in Towson. I'd take him over there. And he studied with him for about a year. You wow. know, and got all this stuff together. All this, you know, talking about the fulcrum and all that stuff. Stuff that I didn't know about. You know. Technical things. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. and then I would kind of sit in and watch and listen to the lessons. And so then when I went down to UMES and they said I had to uh, teach percussion, you know, I had a little... 
little knowledge so I can That's do right. That. Yeah. That's yeah. right. But uh but he always wanted to play. So so I remember one time, man, one time she did something, he screwed up, he did something out of outlandish. You know, not that outlandish, but so much so that I punished him, right? Right. So so I I got I said, boy, I said, so what? What do you want to do? I mean, you know, you, you're doing, you're not doing so. so what? What do you, what do you want? He, he looks at me, tears coming down. He said, "I want to play with you." Amazing. <laughs> I'm like, you want to play with me? I said, okay. So if you want to play with me, that means you got to be as good as Dennis Chambers. You got to be as good as George Gray or any of these other drummers I bring in. Here. You got to be that good and better. He said, okay. And now you hear him, right? That's now. right. Yeah, that's you know, right. That, 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 that was my. Amazing. That was That's an amazing story. Yeah. And so and so then he started playing with me, man. And so when I was down at um, at, at um, uh, Wall Street Lounge, um, um, uh, Willie Barber, Willie Barber mm -hmm. was playing, you know. So when Willie Willie couldn't make the gig, I got John on the gig, you know. And when Willie couldn't make, it, I got John on the gig. Then I got a gig right across the street. It was called the eighteen eighteen. <laughs> The gig would start at about 11 or 12 o'clock at night and go to about 5 in the morning. Now, how old was John at the time? John was in high school. Yeah, yeah. And John might, yeah. Have, been, might have been 15 or 16. <laughs> and I'll tell you who else was, was uh, on that gig with his father, Warren Wolf. Really? Yeah. See, because his father had a group called the Wolf Pack. You know? Wow. Yeah. And so he would play at the 1818. You know, and sometimes it would be his band and then my band or vice versa, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, and and so I had John on those gigs and John was playing his buns off, man. And wow. so then, you know, I, I, when I'd get gigs around town and, you know, I'd throw them his way, man. He, he'd be playing, boy. Incredible. You know? Yeah. Incredible. But that's what I told him. I said, man, I said, if you're going to play with me, you got to be. That's yeah, right. Good. It, Dennis Chambers, it, um, uh, I had Bully Pablo on the gigs. I had Lorenda Featherstone. Linda Featherstone used to play with me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so all those cats, man, would come over here and rehearse. And John learned stuff from each one of them. Yeah. And there was another drummer who who I got in my band. I called my band the Chain Reaction when 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 um, I left, well, well, uh, Natural Gas dissolved. So I put a band together called Chain Reaction. And I used several members who were in the band at Edmondson High School. Now they graduated there. Mm. And so I used those guys in the band. And uh, so so Bobby Ricks would come over here or we would go to Bobby Ricks's house. He was the drummer and John learned from him too. Incredible, you know? incredible. Yeah. So uh, in the final few minutes that we have left, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, the educational process going forward you know we're in the middle of a pandemic oh, yeah. and uh I'm, i know you're probably used to standing in front of students and having that one-on-one -on -one, but now you know everything is online give me a little feel about the difference and how uh, you've made the adjustment well you know i i guess i was forced to make the adjustment because i was going to go over to to on the, on the music, not on the music, I was going to go over to um, uh, um, Maryland Music Academy, that's where I teach. Yeah. Or down the Bills. So so I went down, the last time I went down the Bills, you know, um, the lady said, she said, well, do you want to teach online or do you want to continue to come down here? I said, I'll continue to come down here. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the governor and, and, and the mayor said, all businesses are closed. Right. So now I can't go down there. I'm thinking, wait a minute, hold up. I need to get some new some money. I always had a way to get a little bit of money. Um, I understand. I called him up and said, Yeah, I'll teach you all that. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and so then I got in contact with my students and they they had for the Bill students, they got um what is it, FaceTime. Right. So I use FaceTime. Exactly. And then over um at uh, Maryland Music Academy we do duo, you know, right? It's definitely not the same. It's because I like to be right there with the kids with my horn. You right. know what I mean? Okay, right. this is how it goes. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But you you can do that. But it's it's not the same. For it's instance, I can't I, I can't play with the kids. I find it difficult to play with them. Right. You know, like uh, like for instance, I got in, in a couple instances I have duets. You know what I mean? 
And so I can't play a duet because there's a lag. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I can't right. do that, you know. And um, uh, other than that, you know, um, I got one little kid. The kid, maybe fifth grade, fourth right. grade, you know right. what I mean? He's playing trumpet. He's playing pretty well, too. He's Incredible. playing pretty well. But what he'll do, you know, he'll, he'll play something, and then he, he has his phone. I think his mother's phone. His phone. So he'll push a little button, and now he got a he got a cap and gown on, right? Wow. <laughs> or, or now he got these funny eyes. I'm like, right. yeah, come on, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, it's, you know, I try to keep everything light, you know. Exactly. And so exactly. Like, I'm teaching. I'm teaching my. Uh, I'm teaching my my grandson. Wow. My How dad. old? How old? Five? Really? Yeah, I think it's five. Yeah, yeah. I've not, uh, I've not taught a, a, a student that young yet. Yeah. This is my first time teaching someone that young. And I wanted to do that because there was another student, a parent, who came to me and her, their student was five, four or five years old. And I said, you know, that's too young, you know what I mean? So she took the student somewhere else. Yeah. You know, and the guy taught the kid. But it was too far for her to go, so she calls me back. Well, I actually, I reached out to her. I said, yeah, yeah. You know, I says, if you're interested, I said, I, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd be willing. So she contacted me, bought the kid in at Bill's, and he's playing. Incredible. He was, he, he's like five or six years yeah. old. Yeah. So I said, well, if he could learn, then I know I could be able to teach somebody like this. You know what I mean? So. So I talked to my daughter, and, and, and my grandson come over here. I, you know, I practice a lot. I try to keep my chops up. Yeah. So, so he come over here, and he see me with my horn out. He said, Granddaddy, can I play trumpet? <laughs> and I said, okay. So I gave him a mouthpiece. I got mouthpiece up there. So I, yeah. I showed him how to buzz, and I sit the, the, the trumpet on my lap. And his head is about right here. Right, right. And so he put a buzz away on that horn and get a sound. Yeah, get a sound. yeah. So I told my daughter, I said, all right, so now look, I said, I'll teach him, you know. Incredible. I said, you get him a pocket trumpet. Mm -hmm. So she got a little pocket trumpet. And he's doing good, man. He's, Wonderful. He's, he's got he's got a little repertoire now. He, yeah. He can play high cross buttons. Oh, Mary had a little uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so in our very last few minutes, yeah. There was another musician that uh, that brought their talents to you, and uh, we never got a chance to talk about that person. Okay. Who uh, who was always in your band from uh, the very beginning? Oh, you talking about my wife? You're That's right. About my wife. So I would be remiss yeah. if I didn't give you the last few minutes to talk about your wife. And talk about uh, your musical collaborations. Well, well, we have been at it for 50 years. Actually, longer than 50 years. 50, well, 67, 53 years. Right. Wow. Okay. So, and we met. When we met, she was in Skip Pearson's band, and Skip had hired me. And so, so I, I don't know. I just remember her coming down these steps, and she was looking awfully, awfully good. And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is it, you know. So from that point on, every band that I have had, she has been in that band. You know? And you mentioned that yeah. throughout yeah. our two-hour conversation, yeah, yeah. and I just wanted you to yeah. give her that last word. And yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, then. You know, there were instances where I joined the band and I got her in the band. And then, you know, I joined the Washington Dow, uh, Jazz Battalion. Um, oh, why can't I call this guy's name? Bob Israel. Mm -hmm. Bob Israel. Good play. Play good trombone player. And he plays good uh, guitar. And he's the guy that I met in the Peabody band. And so when he put the Washington Jazz Band together, Washington Jazz Battalion, he asked me, would I be in the band? I'm like, yeah. So I get in the band, I tell him, I said, well, you know, my wife sings, and so well, you bring her in. So now we drive, the two of us are riding over to D.C. to be in the band. Incredible. But, uh, yeah, and then with Gene Walker's band, you know, I told Gene Walker, I said, yeah, my wife sings, so she got in the band. You know, so we've been, we've been doing that. I, I, look, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you, this, this, this is the last story. Okay, <laughs> so, so, Carl Grubbs, Friend of mine, saxophone player, right. great player. I've played with Carl, he's played with me and whatnot. So Carl calls me up. He says, John, he says, look, he says, 
He says, I got a gig for you. What is that? He says, he says, I work at this church and and the church, uh, you know, and it's a summer program, you know. And I said, really? He says, yeah. He says, he says, I, I do the music. I said, really? He said, yeah, but I don't really do anything. He says, he says, he says, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I play my horn and we we march around the church and I play my horn. Right. I said, really? He said, you want to do that? I said, well, Carl, I don't think I want to do anything like that. I said, but my wife <laughs> mm -hmm. might want to do that, right? I turned her on to the gig at Timothy Baptist Church. She's been there ever since. She's been over. Oh, over 20 years. Incredible. Over 20 years. And, and, okay, but the outcome of that, when she got there in this summer program that Carl was dealing with, it was an educational summer program, you know, where they did math and English and science and whatnot, and she was a music teacher. And she was so dynamic with the music teacher, with the music thing, that she ended up being the CEO of that program. What okay. a wonderful story. Okay, story's not over. That program bit the dust, okay? The pastor comes to her and says, look, do you think you could get a music school happening at the church? My wife says, yes. The two of us, she's the CEO and me, ran a school for the past 10 years. It's called B Sharp Summer Music Enrichment Academy. Okay? 10 years. We've had as many as 100 kids. Okay? And we, we teach everything. They taught drums, piano, violin, brass, woodwind, voice, dance. We did all of that. And the only reason we're not doing it this year is because of COVID-19. Incredible. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. We hope to do it next year. Wow. And I'm so happy that we were, we began our story yeah. uh, talking about music and education and scholarship, and we ended our story talking about music, education, and scholarship. Well, that's true. Yeah. John Lampkin, thank you so very much for your time. Thank I you. really appreciate it hearing all the wonderful stories. I'm sorry we couldn't get your wife on camera, but we'll, we'll do that next time. But I'm glad you were able to speak about her and all the wonderful work she, she does as well. Yeah. And I want to thank you again for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I'm, I'm honored and humbled that you would want to interview me. Thank you so much.